Hello. Hi, how are you, Mr. Sergeant at Arms? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good. It's Thursday, yay. Yeah. <laughs> You're growing it again. You know, I've just been too busy and too tired to care. <laughs> well, you know something, but looks nice on you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it does. And that makes your teeth stand out even wider. So that's good. <laughs> but busy is a good thing. Yeah, well, good, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm probably, right? I'm probably going to, uh, I, I took off tomorrow, actually. Um, I don't think I told you. I started working um, probably about two weeks ago. Uh huh. Yeah, that's last, last Monday as a, a legal assistant. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm also working at my parents' business and I'm taking Spanish classes and. Uh, oh my heavens. Yeah. And do you foster. throw in, you know, love life in somewhere of that? Um, not much. Okay. Well, there you go. You got to put that on the high priority. Yeah. <laughs> You're young. You're only young once. <laughs> What do your parents do? Um, uh, well, we live on a farm, and my okay. my stepdad's a butcher, and he's we've got a, wow. a deer processing business during the fall and winter. Cool. So, you um, know, my son um, started raising chickens. Oh yeah. And then he learned how to butcher chickens. Hmm. Now his fiance is not real keen on it. Yeah. Um, but he's coming up next weekend and he brings me, you know, he freezes them, brings them up and they're delicious because they're free range. Uh -huh. And he also brings eggs for me. So I'll, I enjoy that. Yeah. I don't think I'd like to butcher them though. No. I mean, if I had to, I would. If I had to. Right. We, but, we, do, we do about a thousand deer a year. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Do you like deer to eat deer? Yeah. Okay. I mean, and, and they're a lot healthier than beef. Yeah, that's true. It is. And who do we have here? He's connecting to audio. Okay. Hello. Hello. How this are is you? Muhammad. Very good. This is Mohammed Shazad. Mohammed Shazad? Yes. Okay. Is this your first time? Yes. This oh, is good. Time. We love first timers. My name's Lisa. <laughs> hey, Lisa. I'm Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Yeah. Very. So did. Oh, and there. Oh, and look who's in the back. Hi, Evan. <laughs> He's our junior Toastmaster. Wow. <laughs> He's gonna work that total gym to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Jim <Chuck>. started young. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, his generation will have no idea who Chuck Norris is, and he'll need to be the next, either Rosalie Brown or Chuck Norris. There you go. Or Bruce Lee, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, you could do that. And make lots of money and support good old dad. Yeah. So is, it, is your name pronounced Irfan? Yes, my middle name is Irfan, and I'm from Pakistan. Okay. Uh, so usually in back home, people call us from by using middle name rather than last name or first name. So I, I brought up, you know, having a name Irfan, but since I moved here, people call me either Muhammad or Shazad. So you guys can call me anything. Irfan, okay. <laughs> and how did you hear about uh, Toastmasters, Irfan? Uh, you know, I, I I really have a wish that I should learn how to speak, you know, in good manner. Uh huh. So I was researching since quite some time and I know there is a Toastmaster, but unfortunately because of work, I was not uh, yeah. able to join, but finally I find someone who's nearby. Well, you found a great, uh, a great club, right Howard? We love our club. Well, well yeah, one one hundred percent. Good evening, everybody. This Good is uh, a great great club. You're you're definitely going to enjoy it. Welcome to um, Irfan Shazad. Yes, right. he goes by Thank his you, I'm doing great. Thanks. 
And you gave, wasn't it last week you gave your um, icebreaker, Howard? Was it last week? It was the last time that we met, which I think was what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Yeah, time just flies by. Yeah. But I always like um, icebreakers. We and Winfrey is giving an icebreaker tonight, which is fabulous. I love that. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. And then I see a wonderful picture of Beth. <laughs> Beth is staying absolutely still. It's it's really impressive. It is impressive. You know those old photographs where you had to sit still for like you know fifteen minutes while they took it. Oh my gosh! Hey Joe, how are you? Joe. Hey, how you doing? I've missed you, Joe. Every time I put those socks on, I think of you. <laughs> uh, well, I wonder if that store is still open that I got them from. <laughs> I don't know, but I love those socks. <laughs> yeah, well, they're all available online now, I think. Okay. I just so have to how have you them. been doing, Joe? Crazy busy. AstraZeneca is making like both the, I mean, we're, team, we're doing everything. We've got a, a vaccine that's close you being ready. Um, they're actually monitoring it very closely in the UK, uh, not in the UK, in, in the EU. So hopefully that'll be ready. And then we're also working on um, uh, the uh, treatment for, you know, with the antibodies. It's a pretty uh -huh. good treatment. Uh, that's an early stage, though. I mean, that's not going to be ready for a while. And then we're also doing the testing. So we've come up with a test that actually tests if you've had it. Wow. So, so busy. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it sounds it sounds like they're it, it sounds like they're making great progress. I'm curious. No, November third is um uh right uh, around the corner. Any any what do you think the probability is of, of them having it ready by before the election? Well, they might have it ready, but but the question is can they distribute it and who's it going to? Because there's right. the whole world. It's not just the US. Right, right. Um, so they've got commitments. I think they've got a commitment to the U.S., but again, it's just making enough. And if you think you've got to get two do or doses out of it, like you had to do for the, you know, for some other vaccines, right? It's you know, however much they make, you only get half of it. Gotcha. So there's not going to be enough for the world, and let alone for the U.S. Right. So and what's the effectiveness they're shooting for? I heard that if it's, uh, you know, Dr. Fauci said if it's 60% effective, he'll be happy. Well, I mean, it, it varies from who's ever making it and the process they're doing it. So it's really hard to say. I mean, that's the real gotcha. Even the antibodies that they inject into you that we're working on, how long do they last? I mean, um, you know, the flu shot only lasts roughly a year. Um, oh, that's long. Whereas some something like polio or smallpox lasts a lot longer. So um, uh, it, it's, you know, we don't know yet. I mean, it's all science. It depends <laughs> is the typical answer. Right. So you're saying that there, there's a potential that it, that it could last for an extended period of time, or it may just last um, for 12 months, after which time we, it's, or, you know, it or less, like, or, or less, and it'll be like the flu vaccine. In which case, we'd have to get it every every um, year. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, probably. Okay. I mean, we don't have enough data yet, and that's why. I mean, the reason they were able to um, move so quickly, at least AstraZeneca, they actually had connections with the UK uh, mm -hmm. government that they got. Uh, I'm going to say thousands or ten thousand samples. Mm -hmm. you know, blood samples, they were able to, you know, create, you know, gener you know, isolate the virus and, and then create a, something that they could actually use. Right. But all the groups I've been working with AstraZeneca are all somehow involved with some aspect of it, you know, so they're all busy and keeping me busy. And then all the personal stuff. So sorry, I haven't been able to attend. And then I have a, a, a Toastmasters group uh, at work and uh, we're struggling to get our membership back up in the time. So it's, that's a challenge. Gotcha. Yeah, so, but it's so good to see you again. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. and we have yes. Leanne and Aaron's here. And Unruh. we were thinking about you. Nice yes. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I see everyone's set up to work from home. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> it, it just, it I went it just looks that way. It just looks that way. It's just that everyone's background is from their um, their home office. We're actually all in the, <laughs> the office right now. Yeah, well, this, you can see mine's not. Zoom doesn't work so well with uh, blue screen. Uh, Hi, Adam. Team, teams does. Hi, Adam. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderfully. Great. Mm -hmm. It's Thursday. I love Thursdays. Hi, Christine. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Hey, Christine. Hi, Hello, Christine. everyone. <laughs> and I'm doing it on my laptop instead of my phone so I can see everybody. It's wonderful. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. yeah. It's, it's different now. Yeah, well, you know, those um, baby boomers sometimes get <laughs> things. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, on your phone, you can only see that at maximum maybe four or five people, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, here, it's just it's so nice. In the chat, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's disabled. We're going to need one of the hosts or Andrew to enable the chat. Oh. Hostess. With, um, I wanted to compliment Andrew for being quick on the letting in people. Yes. Very yes, good. thank you, Andrew. Very good. Yeah, that was really quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm there. Uh, the chat should be work. on now. Okay. Good, good job, Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't do anything to change it, but I, I just saw that there's a setting that I had to do to turn it on. Right. Take credit well, for it I anyway, Andrew. Well, I complimented you in front of everybody. Yes. So. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's what you say. Yeah. If you can take credit, take it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Aaron. You're back. How are you? Hi. I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. Just uh, enjoying this beautiful, spectacular fall. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just wait until the be, leaves be, drop and I have yeah, to Don't too say many leaves that. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> Just not overnight. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. but it's always good exercise. So that's what I go out there with. Oh. Good exercise. Yep. Yes. And there's uh, Evan again. He's coming back. Mm -hmm. We've got to get him a, a junior Toastmasters hat or something. Well, well he's going to do a presentation this evening. So th th <laughs> thanks, Yuri. <laughs> Give him a shot. Huh? He's supposed to be going to the store to get ice cream soon. I don't know what's happening. Oh, Beth, you're going to the storytelling festival? No, no, to get to the store to get ice cream. Yes, they are doing it online this year. It's usually in uh, Jonesboro, Tennessee, a tiny right. little town in Tennessee, and it's completely overtaken by the National Storytelling Festival for uh, three and a half days most years, but this year it's online, oh. and I'm very excited because some of my favorite storytellers in the whole world, literally in the whole world, will be there, and some new storytellers I've never seen before. So um, the pre-festival concert is tonight, and it's by Donald Davies, who is a legend in storytelling. He's unbelievably good. If you, if you want to see a good storyteller, um, Google Donald Davies later and, and find some YouTube videos. So I'm very excited that starts at 7.30 tonight, so I'll be leaving early, but I'll, I'll catch the rest of the meeting on YouTube later. Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. Is, is that part of Toastmasters? This story it is program? not. Oh, it's it, not. It's, okay. not. it's part of the uh, National Storytelling Center in Jonesboro, Tennessee. They have yeah. lots of events. Right. And once a year, the first, it's always the first weekend in October, they do this <laughs> big festival and it's really amazing. Okay, okay. And, and I'm curious, do the, do the stories, do the storytellers uh, read or, or do they, do they just make it up as they, they go along? Uh, neither. There's very little improvisation. Mostly it's prepared, but it's I no see. one reads. Some actually sing and play instruments. There's some folk singing. <laughs> uh, my favorite kids, um, folks, uh, my kids 
music, Bill Harley. My kids grew up on Bill Harley and he is a storyteller and he'll do some songs and storytelling, but it's anything from folk tales to one woman had the funniest story about mammograms, comparing it to laying down on the garage floor and having someone back the car tire over you and putting cookie sheets in the freezer and slapping the two cookie sheets on you. I was in tears. I was falling down in the aisles laughing because it wasn't just what she said, it was how she said it. And all the men were laughing too. Um, they're just, they can be extremely personal like that, or they can be very not personal. It runs the entire gamut. There are people talking about the history of jazz and people talking about their personal stories in the- I think Andrew hit the gavel. Oh. It's, it's awesome. You need to hit it louder. Uh, yeah. Uh, louder. You need to like, <laughs> really uh, louder. Really louder. Look, you. it's the gavel. I don't, I don't know why, but my, apparently my microphone doesn't pick up the tone of this for some reason. It just sounds your like voice is a little, your voice is a little muffled too. Really? Mm. Hi, Joe. All right. Well, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. I'd like to now call this meeting to order. My name is Andrew, the Sergeant at Arms. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Toastmasters Club. To start things off for us, please welcome our presiding officer, Anu. <laughs> Welcome to our very first meeting of October. And now I am the Vice President of Education and I'm here on behalf of our beloved President, Larry Riggs. So now it's October and as Erin says, the weather is beautiful, although it's a little bit chill in the morning and the evening, but it's so wonderful to go out and walk. I go out of walking after lunch and after dinner sometimes. And I hope you enjoyed this beautiful season and found something interesting doing this beautiful season. Of course, including Toastmaster activity. <laughs> Toastmaster is the educational organization which was started in 1924, I guess. Yes, 1924 and now expanded to 145 countries with more than 16,000 clubs. So it's a really pretty huge organization and we are here to learn public speaking and leadership skills in a supporting and positive learning environment. So welcome everyone and our meeting will start with a little bit of inspiration with from our inspiration master oh before that i really want to bring a warm introduction of our guest from our vice president of membership jerry <laughs> thank you very much anu first off last meeting we had three guests we did have the opportunity to hear a little bit from Beth's brother at the end of the meeting. He was able to come off mute. Uh, so it was very nice to connect with bre Beth's brother, Steve, from Arizona. Also, Christy and Marissa were at our last meeting. I am happy to say that I just got off the phone with Marissa and she'll be joining our club. She was not able to make it tonight, but she will be in the future. Tonight, we are blessed with Irfan, a uh, new guest. This is his first time visiting Toastmasters. Irfan, how did you find us? Um, I was on one of the website, I think Meets Up or Meet Up, and I was just trying to see uh, different groups and I found Toastmaster. Uh, initially, I signed up with Silver Spring uh, and I live in Eldersburg, Carroll County. So mm -hmm. it's almost like 15 minutes from my home and I never able to make it. And then I realized, you know, you guys are nearby, uh, like 20, 25 minutes drive. So I thought, okay, I should try this, but I never knew I'm gonna find such a wonderful group here. Nice people I, I really enjoying so far. Wonderful, we're so glad. Okay, thank you. All right. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to the presiding officer to get the meeting started. I think we have a inspirational quote. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. The stage is on to Erin, which is the inspiration master. And please take 
the stage, Erin. All right. So nice to spotlight myself. <laughs> welcome, everyone, and welcome uh, new guests as well. I would like to share this quote that I recently received um, in the email someone came across and shared with me, and I thought it would be a very nice quote to share with the group tonight. And I would like to share the screen so you can see the quote. Hopefully it will work. Can you see it? We yes. can see it. Great. It's a very short one, but I thought it's a very nice one. It says, feel compliments as deeply as you feel insults. Mm -hmm. um, I think we humans tend to, to uh, for preservation reason, we all tend to be a little bit on negative side or see things more negatively, just so that we are prepared um, for you know, things that are not good. So we have a tendency to tend to take in more negative and believe that more than positive. So I thought this quote kind of like, you know, why do we take insult or negative judgment or comment so much more real than when someone say something nice or give you a compliment and um, a good review? I think we really should give it equal or more uh, emphasis on those, um, on the nice, uh, you know, comments and stuff. So I just want to remind everyone that, you know, all the wonderful compliments, reviews and comments and remarks, we should take it in as strongly as we do or more than the negative one. So keep that in mind, especially as we're being evaluated or judged. I wouldn't say judged, but evaluated or getting feedback on our speeches. Thank you. Thank you, Erin, and I would like to give the stage to the Toastmaster of the evening, which is Lisa tonight. Thank you, Manu. Thank you. I am. I want to welcome our guests tonight, as well as our esteemed members. I am the hostess for tonight, and my job is to make sure that the meeting is keeping on track and the flow is right there and we are on time but to do that i have helpers and i'd like to first introduce um our helper who is the tech master and did i do something wrong why are you laughing <laughs> <coughs> because i saw a cat instead of lee <laughs> <laughs> someone wants to join us tonight <laughs> The, the cast oh, oh my heavens! <laughs> I'm upstaged. Oh my goodness! Yes. You are? Sorry. The cat's going to give a speech this evening. He's number two. Okay, I'll make sure that I write that down. <laughs> so continue. Can't say on. no. She's too cute. Okay, um, we're going to go for the tech master, which is Aaron. If you could explain a little what you do, Aaron. Okay, so uh, as Tech Master, which is a new role uh, for our virtual Toastmasters meeting, my main uh, job would be to spotlight, uh, especially when people are, like right now, I need to spotlight myself. <laughs> when people are uh, giving long speeches and uh, to have that focus, and also to mute uh, uh, and unmute if necessary. And everybody seems to be doing a great job for doing that part on your own. Uh, if you're not speaking, uh, always try to keep your uh, speaker muted. So this way we can hear better on the other one. I will also be dispatching the poll, the poll, the polling later uh, for voting purposes. And that's the function. And also um, keeping an eye on the chat box as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erin. That's very important job. Now we move to the grammarian, which will be, Christine will hold that job tonight. Christine? Uh, unmute. Hi, thank you. As grammarian tonight, I will listen for proper use of the English language and any unique words or word of the day and give a report at the end. Do I give word of the day? Yes. I do. Okay. The word today is truculent. Truculent, which is an adjective for 
easily annoyed, ready to fight, or angered. And I <laughs> was looking for a sentence and do not see one right off. Don't you hate that? Well, I would say my next door neighbor, the old man is truculent no matter how I try to be nice to him. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you. I know I will not become truculent tonight because I <laughs> totally enjoy Toastmasters on Thursday. <laughs> I now put it in the chat. To the Wizard of Oz, which my favorite wizard is Joe. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. I actually happen to be a wizard in the game I'm playing, so that's very appropriate. Uh, I will be counting crutch words that everyone uses when their mind is whirling uh, in a truculent mode at everyone else listening. But the, the words are like, so, um, uh, yep, actually is one that I've heard today. Uh, and, you know, those kind of words when you're just trying to think of the next word you want to say, instead of pausing, you say something like one of those words. So that's what I'll be monitoring and listening for and reporting at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Another important function is the timer, and that is Srinivas. Hey, everyone. Good evening. I'll be a timer today. So I'm going to be tra keeping track of time today uh, for each of the educational portion of this today's meeting, which is prepared speeches, table topics, and evaluations. And prepared speech, I think we have only one that is four to six minutes. And the, to tell you the keeping track, uh, to tell the participant to how to wrap up the speech, let me show you my background. So, so at the lowest allowed time, I'll turn my background like this to green. In the middle of the time range, my background will be yellow. And then at the end of the time range, which is four to six minutes for this today's speech, and also for uh, table topics will be one to two minutes. That is one minute and then one minute and 30 seconds and then two minutes. And for evaluations, it will be two to three minutes. So two minutes it will turn green to 30 minutes, to th two minutes and 30 seconds will be yellow and then three minutes will be red. And you have 30 seconds to wrap up, complete the speech. And I'll give a report at the end of the meeting. Thank you so much, Srinivas. Love the background colors, very vibrant. Even though I really do like your palm trees better, but those are nice. <laughs> Now becomes the prepared speech se speeches section. This is a part where we have our members do their speeches. And tonight I'm very excited because we have an icebreaker. An icebreaker would be the first speech that a new member gives. And it's so exciting because you really learn a lot about the person personally and you get a better insight into them. And that's always exciting. Tonight, Winfrey is having her icebreaker. The title of her speech is A Journey of Self-Discovery. Winfrey is one of the newest members in our club. Today is her first speech at this club. She is excited to introduce herself and lead you through her journey of self-discovery. Do you want to know about her? Let's step into Winfrey's time machine. Winfrey, a journey of self-discovery. Winfrey. One of my favorite movies is Forrest Gump. Forrest Master says, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. My life is like this full of changes and challenges. Unexpected, but wonderful. I enjoy it a lot. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. 
My name is Yuan Fei Zhou. Today, I'm excited to introduce myself and lead you through my journey of self-discovery. Welcome aboard the Wen Fei Time Machine. <laughs> Let's go. Boom, our first destination, my childhood. I will start by decoding my name Wen Fei. Wen means knowledgeable and intelligent. Fei means fragrant and beautiful. From my name alone, you can tell that my parents had high expectations for me. <laughs> Therefore, I had to learn practically everything when I was young. I learned piano, painting, dancing, swimming, ice skating, hosting, and more. Among them, I enjoy painting the most, and I spent more than 10 years learning it. I have developed a knife for the beauty and love going to the art museums and galleries. Although I enjoy painting a lot, I didn't pursue it as my career because most of the artists are unlikely to become famous during their lifetimes. <laughs> Plus, it's hard to earn a living. Our second destination, my university days and my academic life. There's an old Chinese saying, you will have no trouble in the world if you have learned mathematics, physics, and chemistry well. I majored in chemistry at my university, and it was mostly because of my high school chemistry teacher, who I admired a lot. Many of my friends and teachers thought I was crazy for choosing science instead of liberal arts, because I was not a science person. Instead, I was good at painting, writing compositions, and learning languages. I became fascinated with learning language while I was at university. During this time, I became open to western cultures, especially for music and movies. As a result, I chose English as my double major. And now I still have a big passion for learning languages and dream of being a polyglot who can communicate with everyone without any barrier. I now can already speak fluent Mandarin, English, some Japanese, and a little bit of Korean. I'm currently uh, learning Spanish with my friends by, by binge watching a Spanish drama, La Casa de Papel. Why do I indulge in learning language so much? I have to say, the most important reason is to make many friends from different countries and to learn the culture behind the languages. I love meeting new people and making friends. After university, I was admitted into a prestigious research institute, Chinese Academy of Science. My research field is biochip modification and the high support screening of drug candidates and biomarkers for diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. In earning my PhD, even more important than the specific field that I mastered, I gained the ability to learn things fast in a new field. But the biggest rewards of all is my very talented, smart, handsome, and charming husband. I met him on campus. We have so much in common. We are not truculent persons at all. We love watching movies, singing the chorus, playing board games, traveling, and discovering scrumptious food. We have been together for five years and still have plenty to talk about. Every year we celebrate our anniversary and in a special way, and we even made a self-directed microfilm to record our love story. With the right person, every day can feel like a Valentine's Day. <laughs> 2018 was an important year for us. We got married, we graduated, and we came to the United States to start our new life. Here, everything was new to us. We have to start at zero in a completely new environment, especially for me, because I don't want to work in the laboratory anymore. And there aren't enough opportunities for me to work with people and help others to combine with my science background and my 
passion for people, I would like to be an intellectual property consultant. Boom. <laughs> the time machine has brought us back to present. While waiting for my government work permit, I'm currently studying at FCC, Literacy Council, and taking some patent classes at NIH. Moreover, I'm taking a brief step forward by joining Toastmasters to improve my communication, public speaking, and leadership skills. Life is like a roller coaster full of ups and downs. However, with my determination and perseverance, I will achieve American dream. Along the way, I'm looking forward to tasting all the chocolates in my life. <laughs> Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Oh. Thank you so much, Wenfei. We learned a lot about you and I'm very impressed. Very nice. The second speaker is a guest speaker and it is Mike Carr, the 2020 Toastmaster World Champion of Public Speaking, the first place winner, and his speech title, excuse me, speech title is the librarian and Mrs. Montgomery. I was spellbound as I watched the sheriff who had just been shot slide back, open that heavy metal door, stagger forward a couple of steps, look deep into the camera and say, I before E except after C. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters, I was in the sixth grade in Mrs. Montgomery's class watching an educational video where a sheriff was teaching us about writing while a bad guy named Bad English was shooting at him. It was on a film projector because we were technology challenged in my school. And as I watched that film, all of a sudden something started looking strange. The film slowed down, and when it picked back up, it made a sound like tick, 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 and it looked like it was blinking. Then the sheriff was talking to us from the side of the screen. The blinking started again with a loud noise. Ooh, everything went blank. I ran to the front and I turned off the projector. I opened it up. Something smelled like it was burning. Mrs. Montgomery, I said, can I try to fix this? After school, she said. An hour after the final bell rang, I had disassembled the entire projector all over the floor. I was beginning to put it back together when the librarian came strolling through. What are you doing? She almost screamed at me. Who told you you could do this? I did, said Mrs. Montgomery. The librarian, though, zeroed in on me. This is school property, and it better work when you get it all back together again. If it doesn't work, your parents are going to have to pay for that. Now, my parents did not have a lot of money. If I went home and told them they had to replace a projector at school, I would have been better off in the hands of that bad guy, bad English. <laughs> and so with focused energy, I started putting the projector back together. After two hours, it was whole. And Mrs. Montgomery said, let's try it. I reached up and I flipped the on switch and there out in front of us projected onto the screen in all of its glory was nothing, <laughs> nothing. The projector was dead. Mrs. Montgomery put her arm around me and she said, it's okay that you took the risk to try to fix it. The victory is not in the result. The victory is in the try. But I still had to tell my parents. When I got home, I snuck in and I thought, if I just hide in my closet, they'll forget I exist. And I heard from the kitchen, Mike, come in. I walked in and I said, Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. I love you. And I 
am scared of sheriffs. I don't know. I ran to my room. I choked. I couldn't think of anything to say. I thought I'll tell them tomorrow. I crawled on my bed and I looked up at the ceiling and I thought, how do I get to Norway? Now, I know there are people from Norway in the audience. And can I just tell you, I don't know why Norway was my only safe haven on this planet at that point. Maybe I thought that Norway had made a deal with the UN that they would not let crazy librarians come into their country. But at that night, I drifted off to a very restless sleep, dreaming of swimming to Norway. I was awakened with a jolt when my alarm went off the next morning. As I got ready for the day, I was sick to my stomach. When I got to school, I knew my time was up. I slunk to the library to find Mrs. Landon sitting there reading her newspaper. She was drinking out of this coffee mug. That's concerning. I approached her and I told her the final fate of her projector. She slowly started looking up at me. Her lips started curling. Then she leaned forward and said, fine. What, 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 what just happened? I, I'm still alive. I could not believe it. My failure had not killed me. And yours will not kill you. What was it that Mrs. Montgomery said? The victory is not in the result. The victory is in the try. Ever since then, I have walked through life with a little librarian Landon sitting on this shoulder and a Mrs. Montgomery sitting on this shoulder. When I tried and gave my very first speech, which was a train wreck, Mrs. Landon told me, you should never try that again. But Mrs. Montgomery reminded me that the failure had taught me lessons that could be a springboard to future success. And she was right. But her words ring even more true for you. And let me tell you why I know this. For years, Toastmasters has been the place where leaders are made. You are here in some way to increase your leadership skill. And this world desperately needs leaders who will create fertile soil for innovation to grow. Toastmasters is a great example. When COVID hit this year, they could have said, no, we're just going to cancel the contest. We'll cancel the convention and we'll pick it up again next year. But instead, they decided to try something new, this virtual experience. And yes, there have been glitches, but that's what, inf that's what innovation is like. Glitches happen. And the lessons that they have learned take us miles beyond those organizations that just canceled. If you want to lead people to fix persistent problems. Someday, somewhere, somebody is going to have to try something new and you as the leader have the opportunity to encourage that effort, that effort that might fail for a chance to find the future. The victory is in the try. Be a Montgomery leader. Encourage risk. Try new things. The victory is not in the result, my friends. The victory is in the try. Contest chair. Well. Am I back on? Yes, I am. That was the my car. And now our second guest speaker is Linda Marie Miller. She is the 2020 World Championship of Public Speaking. She won second place. Her speech title is Pretending Not to Know. This is Linda Marie Miller, pretending not to know. Before I share the speaker, 
I would yes. like to ask everyone to take note this time and compare with the first speaker mm -hmm. of the similarities or different things and things that you want to share. And so that we can share a little bit of comments at the evaluation session for the round robin. Okay. If you're ready to change the world, but you don't know how, I have the key. It's just a question, but it's the most powerful question in the world. The question is, what are you pretending not to know? That question changed my life. What was I pretending not to know? I find out when I helped my friend Tony and his son Michael. Michael was not your typical teenager. Once, he convinced his father to let him bring a homeless boy into their house. Michael shared everything with that young man and gave up his own bed until that boy got back on his feet. In college, Michael excelled. As a freshman, he tutored seniors in chemistry. He loved science. He loved so, science so much, he enrolled his professors and fellow classmates into assisting him as he delivered a science experiment for blind children so that they could experience the love of science that he had. Michael was the whole package. A brilliant mind, a caring heart, a dutiful son, and Tony, was so proud. Then the phone call came. Michael is dead. Hit by a car 600 miles from home on a college field trip. I jumped into action to help my friend Tony who was too grief stricken to even think about bringing Michael's body home or planning a funeral. I phoned the hospital who told me Michael's body would not be released until testing was completed testing for drugs, testing for alcohol. The police department was called for a copy of the police report. Had the driver been drinking, speeding, talking on their phone? The police said they talked to the woman that hit Michael and she said she hadn't been drinking or speeding. They had no reason to doubt her. Using Tony's Airbnb account, I logged on to seek accommodations for the many family and friends that would be arriving for the funeral none of the reservations were accepted. Thinking there must be song with something wrong with Tony's account, I logged on using my Airbnb account and the exact same properties were immediately accepted. What do you think's going on? How could this be? This is my friend Tony. I've been pretending not to know that I am a blonde haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned beneficiary of a system controlled by people that look like me. I live a life of white privilege while Tony has trouble seeking accommodations for his grieving family members. I live a life of white privilege while this amazing young boy on his way to medical school is profiled even after his death, suspected of drug use, or being up to no good for simply crossing the street. This amazing young man who once brought a homeless boy into his house, a white homeless boy, his death dismissed based on the color of his skin. The white woman that killed Michael wasn't tested for drugs or alcohol. She wasn't even suspected of speeding, even though she had a long history of speeding tickets. The more I thought about it, the angrier I became. This is discrimination. This is racism. I was comforted by the fact that I am not a racist. I have never discriminated against anyone. In my career, I have hired many amazing black people. 
When my son was young, his best friend was black. Hey, I live in a very diverse neighborhood. All my neighbors are black and they like me. I have never used a racial slur or told a racial joke in my entire life. I've been pretending not to know that I am the problem. I remained silent when I saw racism in my family for fear of being disinherited. I remained silent when I saw racism at work for fear of not being promoted. I always blamed it on a broken system, but guess what? The system is working exactly the way it was designed to. In exchange for my silence, the system has made sure I don't have to worry about anything. I don't worry about someone wanting to harm my son. I don't worry about being discriminated against at work. I don't worry about being watched by security guards when I go shopping. And I don't have to worry about being shot if I am stopped by the police. My silence has benefited me at the expense of others. And I will remain silent no more. I now use my voice as an ally for and with people of color. I am committed to helping create a system that works for everyone, not just people that look like me. Look around. Look around at the world today. Don't you agree it's in need of a little change? Fellow Toastmasters, you have the most powerful voices on the planet. Commit right here and now to create the change that you want to see in the world. Let's create a world where there's no race but the human race, one shared humanity. All it takes is finding your truth. And all that takes is one powerful question. So go ahead, ask yourself. Madam Contest Chair. We are now, it is now 7.18, we are right on time. We're going to take a short break for 10 minutes, at which time, since Anu said that it was a good time to take notes, do you agree, Anu, that's also a good time in this 10 minutes that we can write things down? Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll come back to our, and do our topics, Master, and our table topics. Oh, hi, Joe. My mute. Sorry. Hi. How have you been? I've been fine. Are you uh, still with your uh, number number uh, seven or nine? I absolutely am. Okay, good. I am. I am. He's wonderful. Good. Thank you for asking, Joe. I wanted to ask, but I didn't want to hear the answer if it wasn't yes, so I was too afraid to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just doing a lot more walking since COVID. I did 40,000 mi or 40 miles last uh, week or so ago. Wasn't so good this week, but. Wow. You mean just daily or going on a specific hike? Uh, just daily, doing 10,000 wow. or more steps a day. So that's my goal. Oh. And that's since awesome. I don't have to drive uh, both ways, it's been easy to do. Yeah. I mean, most of my meetings are in the morning and in the afternoons are you know, things <laughs> like nonstop. So. Do you still have your same email address? I do. Okay. It's... Um, yeah, it's on the Toastmasters, yeah, so it's the same. Did you get one for 
Did you get one from me recently, like a couple weeks ago? Um, I don't think so. Let me check here. Um, I might have. I you know I I actually finally actually did a sort of all my email using. Uh, you know, I haven't done that, but it was just getting too overwhelming to keep track of all the emails I get. Um, it's coming up, I'm, it's loading now. I'll let you know. Because, you know, I might really, really need you sometimes, so I have oh. to be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's see. I'll look for, uh, hang on, search. Beth, is the storytelling, did you say it was three days or it is three days? Normally, it ha there's a pre-festival -con pre concert Thursday night and then the and workshops before that. But the official festival itself usually is all day Friday, all day Saturday and half a day, a little more than half a day on Sunday. That's usually how it is. But since they had to go virtual, it's all it's it's most of the day Friday, most of the day Saturday. Um, so when I say most of the day, they have like an hour and a half gap, um, like three times during the day. So it's a good chunk of tomorrow and a good chunk of Saturday, but not at all on Sunday. So it's a lot less storytellers than when, when they do it in person, but it's still going to be wall to wall storytelling. And it's, I'm, I'm, I'm so addicted. I'm really looking forward to it. Is there any block of time for somebody who's not able to be there all that time? Is there any block of time you would suggest? So um, the tickets are $50. There's just one flat fee for the, usually when they have it in person, there's a one day pass and a two day pass and a three day pass, that kind of thing. But since it's online, it's just $50. So if you buy a pass for $50, you can um, look at, um, I, I posted the link in the chat. You can look at the schedule, go to the schedule tab. The link I posted takes you straight to the speakers tab so you can see who the speakers are. And there are two different parallel sessions. So at any given time, you have to pick which one you're gonna be in. And they tell you which storytellers are in which sessions. And you can just read the storytellers bios and you know see which ones resonate with you and then decide which ones to go to. I can actually, if you want, I can email you the list of my all time favorite storytellers <laughs> that, I'm, uh, that I'm going to make sure that, that I don't miss that I highly recommend. How long are the stories? So normally uh, they have five big tents and they have five parallel sessions, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the session, so this is my experience. I don't know how it's going to be different for virtual yet because I haven't really studied the schedule yet. But normally they'll have like a two hour block with so many storytellers that each one gets about 15 minutes. So they might tell one long story or a couple of shorter stories. And then there will be sessions where there are only two storytellers and each one will get a half hour or an hour. So it really depends on the session that whether you're going to be hearing lots of shorter stories from a lot of people or some longer stories from fewer people. They, they do vary. And the nature and subject, the topics, the flavors, they're so diverse. And I think that's, that is definitely one of the reasons why I love this club, because we have a lot of diversity. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love this festival, because there's so much diversity. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> No, we can't. <laughs> hey, Beth, did we find out if, if you miss any of the sessions or if you just can't attend them, are they available for later? So, you know, I, Christine. I did, not, I did not ask. I did not find out. I'm curious whether they're going to make it available on demand. Usually when it's in person, they will, uh, one of the five tents will be the, the family tent. The, they'll make sure that there's no off-color language or, or subjects in the family tent. And usually the family tent next to the library in Jonesboro, they'll um, do a, a, a live webcast during the live festival. They'll webcast it, but they won't, you can't get the recording later. So I have no reason to believe that the recordings will be available after this event on demand for the people who paid for tickets, but who knows? We'll see. I'll have to ask. So I'm going to miss traveling to... Uh, to Tennessee. It's a, a fun car trip and it's a really cool little town, but I'm still psyched because my honey and I are going to have some good uh, storytelling, watching time together. So your next speech is going to be about storytelling, I hope, and tell your own story. <laughs> you know you've led yourself up to that. We nope, nope. don't expect that. I'm hooked on watching them, not doing it. <laughs> I <laughs> wish. I wish I could do it, but no, I just, I'm hooked on watching them. I just saw, you know, when Unmu gave her speech the other day about the movement, 
and then you see it here uh, when I watch those two great speeches. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, I've learned a lot. And I'm going to put it in my head from last yep. time. Yep, my car especially. Wasn't it cool how he gradually receded into the background when he's talking mm -hmm. about being scared and then he yeah. gradually come, came back into the foreground. He, he just really was, blew me away with his, his techniques and, and Unu did set it up really well for us to she be able did. to watch for that. Yep. Yeah, and Linda, Marie, I mean, she did a lot with the cards too. So that was very <sighs> so powerful. powerful. Very so powerful. powerful. Wow. I cried all over again, even though I already saw that speech, I cried all over again, just yeah. so powerful. Hey, just a quick update. I checked the storytelling website and now it says you can enjoy the content for up to seven days. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what you're gonna be doing, Tom. <laughs> I'm surprised you got tea and sitting next to my beautiful wife. Yeah, what then, Kat? What were uh, gonna say? I was gonna say, I'm surprised Linda didn't win the first prize. So, so I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, Toastmasters International contests, it's very strict rule about if there's a disqualification, they will not tell you who was disqualified. They'll just mm -hmm. announce that there was a disqualification. Mm -hmm. But between you, 16 of you and me, um, it was on video. So you can actually look at the time of the video when he starts and the time when he ends. And it just so happens that the person who I thought was going to be the winner, or certainly in the top three, he was second last year. And um, he was also like second or third a few years ago. Uh, Yuan, I can't remember his name. He's Chinese. Yuan Chang, I think, or something like that. He, he went over by like one or two seconds. Oh. Um, so I really think he might have been first place if it weren't for the fact that I think he was disqualified, which we probably technically should be discussing because you're not supposed to know that. But, you know, how can you not know it <laughs> if you, know, you look at the video? You know, I got disqualified a couple of times in the contest. You know, it. you were there. I, I was disqualified. I was in the evaluation contest and I thought I'd done an excellent job. And I think, I, I, you know, they didn't even tell you because they don't tell you. You don't know. There's no way to know. But I thought I'd done a really good job, felt really good about it. But I was um, a little sluggish that day because I hadn't, um, I didn't feel well the night before. And um, I didn't, I wasn't even in the top three. And I'm like, how could that possibly be? And I said, oh, I bet you I DQ'd. Because they announced there was a DQ, but you never know who it was. So, yeah, I know what it feels like. And I, yep, Ben Kate, Ben Kat, I know you do too. Yeah. So it's a very it's a good pra practice to do it in our club. And by the way, that's my segue into it's 728. And you know <laughs> how job. I love to be on time. So at 728, after hearing those wow. great three speeches that we already did, we're now moving into the impromptu speech section. And our topics master tonight will be Venkat. Please welcome Venkat. Good evening, everyone. You know, in any Toastmaster club, you can find three types of people. First type, they're always willing to speak. Anytime you call, anytime you say, hey, who's willing to speak? Their hands would go. And these people participate in contests, they go out and speak in other clubs. They are very popular like Beth or Tim. And there are second category of people. The second category of people, they are Mr. Reluctance. They don't want to speak, but if you call their name, they would come out and speak. I'm someone like that. And there is third category of people. These people, they do not want to come out. They hide in the shell. They would rather kill themselves instead of coming out and speaking. Guess what? My job today is get those people out. Because the only reason we are joined the Toastmaster Club is to improve on our communication skills and leadership skills. This table topics section will help you to practice on, to practice speaking impromptu on your feet. I have four topics prepared. I'm gonna call out, I have already decided who I'm going to call out. I'm not going to give the choice to you. 
I'm not going to call Beth. I'm not going to call Joe. You are one of them, Howard. All right, the first topic. So I'm kind of keeping it humorous and there's only one topic that is kind of uh, very subjectful. So the first topic, you know, we are all in a pandemic situation, mostly locked down at home. We try different things, things we haven't done before. And one of them is at kitchen. It is not just us or family members as well. Any one of you have a teenage daughter or a teenage son? And here is the situation. Your teenage daughter, she has just baked a cake. And guess what? The cake is awful. You tasted it. And you know how sensitive teenage girls could be? <laughs> you don't want to tell them it is awful. Yet, you want to be encouraging and also you want to tell her, hey, I don't want to eat. Leon, how would you do it? Leon is already. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. So my teenage daughter has just baked a cake and it's awful. What do I do? I'm trying to remember if this has actually happened or not. Kids didn't do a whole lot of baking <laughs> when they were teenagers. Um, but yes, even when they've done things, Alex, my daughter, who for some of you that don't know, she is 22 right now, always been willful and always said, I have an idea, which was very scary. Um, so you're always cautious, but I'm always encouraging, always try to keep lines of communication open. Uh, never freak out. I think I did that really well over the last 25 years is never really freak out. But um, yeah, if a cake is awful, I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> I would make her taste it and get her opinion. And what do you think of this? And then have them help, help them come to their own conclusion of how awful something that they did is. It's kind of a group consensus, you know, and then you go over her brother, Peter, Peter, taste this. What do you think? So it's not just me. <laughs> that thinks it's awful it's 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 a group decision and then you try again what was that thing that he said the vict i wrote it down on my on my board here the victory is in the trying mm -hmm. so i i really like that and then maybe the next time she'll actually ask questions <laughs> thank you Good response, Leanne. I like the quote you said from, uh, uh, from the speaker, Mike Marr. So moving on to the next one. This topic I have tried before. I actually used this topic in the same forum like a couple of years ago. So, so some of you, this may be familiar, but this is kind of interesting. And this is again another situational question. So here's the situation. You are a 20 year old guy. You are going out on your date with your five year old crush. To a nice, very nice restaurant. The food was awesome. It has gone so well so far. You really hit off, you really like each other so much. You finish your dessert, the check is here. You want to impress your girlfriend? You're gonna pay. You look for your wallet, except your pocket is empty. 
The wallet is gone. Andrew, what would you do? <laughs> oh my. Um, you know what? That reminds me of a that reminds me of a, a great date uh, that I had while I was in college. Um, it was super classy. Uh, took this girl to Taco Bell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, had a great time. And I also remember that we went to um, over here in uh, Charlestown to the horse races. And uh, I think we actually put a few dollars down for a race and we walked up to the front to the railing uh, so we could see the horses real close. And <laughs> toward the end of the race, uh, we noticed one of the horses was. Um, was starting to slow down a little bit you know, after the last turn. And it was slowly trotting up to the finish line. Didn't quite get there before it started to jump a little bit, jumped a little more. The rider jumped off of him, the jockey. So the horse took a few more steps and then proceeded to collapse onto its side and apparently pass away. So that was a very interesting date, um, one that I'll never forget. Felt bad for the horse. Um, also <laughs> made me wonder how often that actually happens. And, um, you know, Taco Bell, a horse race that ended terribly. How do you beat that? I don't think you can. Thank you. All right. So our next question. This is this is a little bit of serious tone in it. Here's a question. Given the pandemic situation now, should the schools switch to in-person learning? Yes or no? If yes, what kind of precautions would you recommend? Howard. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I motioned that I wanted to um, uh, participate in this. Then you, you answer, you ask the, um, you set forth a, a scenario that I really don't want to comment on because there, there's a political tinge to it. But anyway, well, I'll, I'll go for it nonetheless. Right. So first of all, I, I assume everyone can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Um, w w without question, um, kids should be allowed to go back to school. Um, I, I, I've, I've seen a number of studies where um, them being quarantined uh, away from what they've become accustomed to over um, the years has really affected them uh, negatively. And I, I think that's, that's certainly a bad thing. We've seen an increase in uh, um, depressions, uh, an in increase in depression for both uh, folks um, that are older, but also for, for younger uh, kids. I, I think this has been a, 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 an incredible strain on them uh, mentally. I, I think initially, uh, you, you know, as a teenager, we were all uh, young, we were teenagers, we went to um, elementary school, middle school, uh, high school. You know, th this, this would initially seem like a positive thing when you don't have to go to school. I mean, that, that's, that's every, every uh, teenager's dream. But after, let's see, we are in October now. I think most schools started uh, September 2nd or late, late, uh, late August. And I, I, think, I think it goes without question that uh, kids not being able to go back to school, uh, be amongst other people, because that's, that's one of the, that's, that's, you know, it's not just learning. One of, one of the positives, and it's a big positive, is that you get to interact with uh, your friends, uh, teachers, and administrators, something that you can do virtually, but, you know, quite honestly, it's not the same. You know, we're here uh, in this Toastmaster class. This is great. I like what Toastmasters has done, but I think, I think, were we to poll everyone, you know, the consensus would be that we would all love to be 
um, in a in a room together. And I, I think that's no different uh, for uh, the kids that are that are um, quarantined now and unable to physically interact with with uh, the folks that um, they've grown accustomed to. So I, 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 I'm of the opinion that we absolutely should uh, send the kids back to school if, if, they're, if, they're medical, if they're medical issues um, with respect to administrators and uh, teachers that perhaps could be uh, phys physically compromised uh, because of uh, pre-existing conditions or, or their general health then certainly we can um, accommodate them in, in some, some, some manner. But um, the, the kids are our are, are primary concern. And um, just to close things up, I, I, I think it would be best if, if we sent the kids back to school. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Robert. Uh, I think that's it then, Kat. We're at 741 and 742. You move into the general evaluator. And thank you so much for those questions then, Kat. Thank you. And great answers, guys. Great answers. So now I'm, we're going into the evaluation section. And I'd like to introduce our general evaluator, Unwu. Okay, this is the second part, I guess, mm -hmm. of the meeting. And we all learn from feedbacks. So this is quite an important part in Toastmaster, in my opinion. And I will be evaluating the whole meeting with all the helpers and also the speech evaluators. So I would like to start with the speech evaluation, which will be Jerry tonight, evaluating when fake speech. Let's welcome Jerry. By the end of this evaluation, I may be truculent <laughs> in holding up your speech, Wen Fei, to the speech of the champions that we witnessed following your particular live speech tonight. I, like many others, was completely blown away by what you brought us. What doesn't get captured in the video that we can watch later on and that I hope you get a chance to review is the scrolling chat that was just praising you, starting off with, I'm already blown away by Wen Fei and way to go. It, it was wonderful. And it was wonderful to see your reaction as you continued to thank people and follow up because that was a fantastic speech. Those things that we start to try to incorporate as we become more advanced speakers, you did off the bat. Let me tell you a few of those examples. Gestures. When your speech started, I thought you might be a little closed in. You might have your elbows attached to your rib cage. But then you said, bam, the arms came out. You said, time machine, the arms started running. Great gestures. And when you're on a larger stage, at, standing, I think you can open up those gestures just a little bit to get those arms away from your body. But to use those gestures at this point in time is amazing. Not only that, you incorporated some feedback I got in the past on my personal speeches, where when you're telling a timeline, you have to keep in mind that everyone's seeing your mirror image. Beth, I see you smiling because you gave me that feedback. So when you start in the beginning of time, you need to be on your right side of your screen. You did that. You started with your journey on your right side of the screen and moved us through. That same trick did not follow through with you when you went later on, when you were talking about your career change, instead of keeping with that right to left so that in our view, the audience view, it's left to right. Then you flipped it when you were talking about your, your career path. So that's an opportunity for you to go back, look, and match that movement up for your audience. We mentioned tonight how we liked how Mike Carr approached the camera. Now, I'm not sure if he had a microphone on, 
One thing with your computer, as you got closer, you got louder. That's an interesting thing that I didn't even think of when, when applying our own to our own speeches, that we have to be cognizant of our volume as we approach the camera. So one thing to think about. I also, one other opportunity for you might be to go really deep in your personal story. You did the best job I've ever seen at a high level overview. That made me want to hear more. I can't wait to hear further icebreakers from you. And the reason why we hold you up to the greats, to those champions we heard earlier, is because their speeches start just like this. And they watch the video and they tweak it and they take that feedback. And for you to start where you did tonight is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you, Jerry. I can't agree more with all the feedbacks. And also, I want to give a little apologize to Wenfei to challenge you to speak before the all the world champion speeches. And I didn't give you any hint of this, <laughs> but you did a really great job. And I can't, I can't agree more on Jerry's comments. And next, I would like to have a round robin session. And I would like to get everyone's opinion on what they thought about the world champion speeches, any things that you might you have learned or anything that you can think of that they could have been better of. So I would like to get um, five participants, I guess, uh, for the sake of time to give short comments or 30 seconds or one minute. So please raise your hands if you want to participate. I, I will write down five names and then I will go from there. So I saw Tom raise Srinivas, Howard and uh, Christine. One more, I guess. Okay, Beth. I will go on the order of this and please, Give your comments for 30 seconds or one at maximum one minute. So at TACMaster, if you are checking the time, please. If there's one minute, I will just change it. So just mute that person, even though they're going to talk more. <laughs> so first, I would like to go with Tom. Tom, could you share your comments on the Pop Champions speeches? Well, thank you, Uno. I'd love to share that. And I'll get back to actually the answering Venkat's question from earlier. Um, <clears throat> this is my second time seeing these speeches. The first time through, I loved them both, but I had them in the other order. I think the second place was first place and vice versa. And after seeing them again, I, I understand now why first place was chosen as first place. And it has to do with what Beth was saying. It's really all about the Toastmaster criteria. Initially, I was very compelled by the story of the young man being killed. That emotionally resonated with me. There are a lot of pull-ins, emotional pull-ins. And I, I connect with that very well when it comes to these speeches. So I immediately thought, this has got to be number one because I had that emotional connection but it didn't satisfy all the great speech criteria. Whereas the first speech, it did that. I had some emotional connection. I felt joy when I, he was relieved. He didn't have to get punished. And I felt anxiety when he broke the projector. And I loved his use of the stage and his adaptation to that new format, the camera. So I can clearly see why he won and even though I really still emotionally feel compelled, she took second place. That was my opinion. And hopefully, Venkat, that at least shares my opinion to answer your original thought. Thank you, Tom. I would like to move on to Srinivas' opinion. Unfortunately, this is my first time watching those videos. <laughs> no matter how much, you know, every time I watch all these World Championship uh, speeches, 
And the first one clearly reminded the new format, how it can dramatically change the perception to a completely theatrical perception. It's a really, really a drama right in front of us. He clearly projected like a movie-like scenario. More vocal varieties, like 3D dimensional coming front and then sneaking from corners. He knew exactly what's the boundaries are, how to make your uh, experience much better. And his use of gestures was more advanced. It's like full spectrum in terms of vocal variety. Not seen like from expressions to from voice. That That is a good one. And the second one, it's very powerful and emotionally charged story. It yeah. drew me Sorry, like Sorry, I need to cut that <laughs> from this point. <laughs> okay. And right. maybe we could hear more about the second speech from Howard. <laughs> yep. Right. So, right. So, so, so I enjoyed both, the, 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 but the first one I enjoyed the most, uh, the reason being, it's because I, I felt that I could really, um, really um, imagine that what, what he was saying could have happened to me. I, 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 loved, I loved his enthusiasm. I loved um, the topic that, that, was, that was chosen. Now, now, I'm not saying that the second one, I hit 30 seconds. I'm not saying, let me just finish up. I'm not saying that the second one was, was not bad. In fact, when, when the lady first started, I thought it was great. Here's, here's the only issue that I had with the second one that I didn't have with the first one. I, I thought that the subject was uh, pretty intense. And I think given that she only had, I, I think maybe six or seven minutes to do, um, I think that was not enough to really cover something that was so, um, so impassioned and so important. And I, I think that's probably, in my opinion, I, I saw that's that's what hurt it. That f for that second topic, she needed a lot more time than what was given. Mm -hmm. So, so I'd have to say that that the first one was, um, to me, uh, a, a better choice given the condensed amount of time each person had to to yeah. deliver what they said. Yeah, I agree with that. It would need a lot of depth. And maybe next, uh, Christine, can you share your opinion? Thank you. Tonight was interesting in the three speeches we heard to illustrate the impact of gestures and movement. Starting with our, our um, first, uh, not one day, but the recorded speech, just how dramatic it was. It was impossible for not, me not to be captured the entire time. I mean, he just had so much movement, there was no chance that my mind could even wander completely on uh, what he was saying. Uh, then when Faye had a lot more gestures than the second speaker did, I think, and when she started, there, she had a huge white background and she was small in it and her gestures were small. Even in the beginning when she said most powerful, she said most powerful and there she had enough room that she could have done that. And the background was the same color as her hair Mm -hmm. And she didn't have the movement, so she wasn't as impactful for me. Uh, not just yeah. be, not necessarily the message, but just the whole presentation of it. Yeah, yeah. Can you add something more, Beth, on that? <laughs> um, a lot. I, I agree um, very much with uh, most of what was said, if not all of what was said. Um, the thing that struck me the most when you asked us to compare, and I paid attention to, to how is it different, was, and Christine alluded to this, if not the other, is that, that it was a much wider space. And um, I was fascinated by the fact that Mike Carr's space was relatively small and confined, and yet he moved extremely well within that confined space. And it was very fluid and very natural. And I just found myself in awe at one point when he faded into the background, when he was talking about how scary he was, and then he, when it was okay, he started fading back into the foreground. I thought he must have rehearsed that a lot because it was so graceful and natural and it had such impact. So the biggest difference to me was that her story had the power, but not the, her delivery. And his story, if you take the delivery out of it, was very not 
interesting at all, but it was all about the delivery that made it come to life. So two very different styles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would conclude with all this opinion. I hope everyone had learned from all these comments and different point of views. And now I would like to have a vote for all the speakers, evaluators. And now you will have a little screen and please vote for your best speakers. And while you're voting, Timer, are you ready to give your report? Yes, you know. Okay, great. Congratulations, Renfei. You did it. You took uh, six minutes and 21 seconds for your speech, and it was four to six minutes. So with still within time, under 30 seconds, above the highest allowed. And table topics, Leon, you did uh, exactly two minutes. Andrew, you did it uh, one minute and 15 seconds. Howard, three minutes and 18 seconds, much above, which has to be only 30 seconds above the limit. And Jerry, you did it, uh, it took uh, three minutes and 51 seconds long. I think you got uh, wanted to compare the, the world championship speeches with her and then nice uh, evaluation and feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Srinivas, for the reports. And next, I would like to have the reports from our grammarian. Thank you. Christine. Know that this is all for your good and there's no reason for any of you to become truculent with this grammar. <laughs> a couple things when you said you were introducing the toastmaster and you said the toastmaster which is it would be the toastmaster who is and there was a couple times you said the word feedbacks in plural and i don't think feedback is ever plural i can't think of any situation where it would be and you use lots and lots of hands a lot of run-on sentences. Aaron, you had a tense, someone, you had someone share with me and it would have been someone shared with me, past tense. Lisa, you had said members give their speech, you know, members do their speeches and it would be members give their speeches. When Faye gets the best word of the night, which is polyglot, polyglot, a person who knows and is able to use several languages, and Kat, you said whoever goes to a Toastmaster meeting, and it's Toastmasters, I don't think it would be as the, the organization would be singular. I think that's always plural. Andrew, you had seahorses real close. That would be seahorses up close or seahorses more close or more, more closely. And that is my report. Thank you, Christine. And we already have our accounter on the spotlight. So, Joe, go for it. Thank you. I'm only going to mention those people that ha use crutch words, not those that did not. So, Unwu, your favorite two were so and yup. <laughs> Uniquely used yup as a crutch word. Uh, Aaron, you had quite a few uh, favorites. You used so, but your favorite by far was um. You had used a, uh, and you know, is it? Christine, you had two, but not very frequently. So and but. I only heard you say those once. Srinivas, your favorite two were so and like. You used them once. Van Cat, you used so very, very uh, well, as I might say, and you know. Leanne, you, your favorite one was um, and you also used so. Andrew, your favorite ones were um, and, and you know. Howard, 
your favorite one by far, and I just stopped counting, was um. And, and you used um a couple times. Tom, I noticed one so. And Beth, you had one um and a couple buts. And that's my report. Thank you. I'm happy to see you back and a wonderful art counter as well. <laughs> now I would like to give my report and use less yup <laughs> this time <laughs> for a general evaluation. I would like to start with a wonderful time management from our Toastmaster of the evening. She did a wonderful job and especially during the break she was facilitating all the speakers to come back on time and it was great until I got a little bit out of time. The second thing, second part I want to tell is about the table topics. I really loved the humorous part spice on the table topic and all the storytelling in it and it really makes the vibe to really want to participate although you didn't ask to volunteer but it really give the up vibe of the whole meeting one thing i would like to give a comment for future table topic masters is that you really want to get a lot of participation not your speech so if you are going to tell a story please make it short so that you hear more from the speakers because tonight we only had three participants and lastly i really want to appreciate all of you to be part in all this all the sessions and especially because we had a round robin session we had almost everyone had speech once in had speak what spoke once during this Toastmaster meetings. So I think this was a really great part. And that would be all for my general evaluation session. And I would like to give back my stage to Toastmaster of the evening, Lisa. Thank you. And as the Toastmaster of the evening, I get the honor of presenting the awards. The best award tonight for speaker is Winfei. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you, Winfei. <laughs> Table topics is Andrew. Love the story about Taco Bell and dead horses. Thank you. <laughs> and the best evaluator was Jerry. So let's give a round of applause for Jerry too. And now I'm going to turn it over to... Your shining star. Pardon? Shining star. Oh, I forgot the shining star. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to give the shining star, and I don't know if I can do this, but since I'm the Toastmaster, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to give it to Wednesday. Because, oh my gosh, she did her icebreaker, and then she had two world-class speaker, uh, world speakers behind her, and she was cool as a cucumber. So you are my shining star also today. So thank you, Winfrey. <laughs> and now I can turn it over to, for the membership message to our VP of membership, and that would be Jerry Stevens. Jerry, take it away. Thank you, Lisa, and huh? to Toastmasters and guests for joining us today. I particularly want to call out some people I haven't seen in a while. I'm just so thankful, Adam, that you were able to join us again. Yes. Sure, you are doing something amazing with the Special Olympics right now. I know fundraising started. Are you doing any fundraising right now? Yep, I'm um, uh, uh, doing the uh, fundraising for o Over the Edge where I'm jumping where I'm jumping over, I'm rappelling 17 stories down uh, oh. the side of a building in uh, Bethesda in a couple weeks. Amazing. Oh my goodness. Yes, mm -hmm. is a great follow on social media. I think I did see the picture of you hanging off the side of a building. Yep. 
Yep. Uh, <laughs> this year, uh, I'm doing it with a chief of police in, uh, in Bowie, and he, uh, and uh, we're doing it as a theme of uh, WWE wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> well, so while well, and we're able to come back and join us. Also, Joe, it is just so good to see you. I've heard many people say that, and I apologize for having stalked you over the last several months, concerned about <laughs> where you've been. Uh, but I've, you know, in absence, the heart grows fonder. And over those times, I was thinking about the impact you've had on me and thinking about those speeches that you've given that were not on a path. And I've really appreciated that, and it's helped me in my journey. So good to have those those faces back with us. Erfan, I'm just so thankful as well that you were able to join us today. Now, I know at this point of the meeting, chat gets buried. I do want to put an important message back in the chat for you, particularly Erfan, about how we can stay in contact. So if you're able to see chat, are, are you able to see chat? Yes. Perfect. I'll put that in the chat for you. But I'd also like to see how this meeting matched up against your expectations. Would you mind telling us? Sure. Um, I, I think the way I conceived this meeting when I was coming here initially, I was thinking it might going to be, you know, typical session where people will speak and they will have topic. But I think you guys have taken this to next level and it is really, really informative. And, uh, you know, I have never seen, you know, that organized meetings, uh, especially when you guys are giving opportunity to people to speak as well as also helping them what they were doing wrong, you know, so that is the best part what I like. Great. Well, thank you again for coming. We hope that we'll see you back. Absolutely. Okay. Definitely. Wonderful. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our Vice President of Education, Anu. Great. Since we are in a new month, I updated our progress chart and I would like to share with you. This is the progress chart up to now and we have myself and Jody completed her path. So congratulations, although Jody's not here. If you see her next time, please share some comments. And next, I would like to share our new members board. So we have five new members starting their journey. And we already have Wenfei and Howard did their icebreakers. So that is a big kudos for them. And that would be the progress chart. The progress chart will be updated on our website. So you can see that on our website. And also if you're new members, remember that you are going to, you will have to choose a path to start with in Toastmaster International website. And that would be all for educational session. And coming back as a presiding officer <laughs> instead of Larry, <laughs> is there any club business that anyone wants to share? I, I just read Tom's note. Everyone was laughing. Danya, I actually had that beer the other day. <laughs> is that a true? Is that a true story? No. No. Okay. Yeah, you got. You got to read to the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be Tom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just read to the end. I, I got it. Very good. <laughs> Let's not forget Team Photo before we uh, group photo. Oh, that's before we yes, go. sure. Let's have a group photo. Le Leanne, are you ready? Uh, just. Maybe let me get a 
<laughs> okay, is everybody smiling? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I, I never get me smiling. I'm always like focused. <laughs> By the end of my year, I'm going to get one picture where I'm actually smiling at the camera. That's a good goal. That's a good joke. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you all on the 15th. Looking forward yeah. to it. See you I'm, in two I'm, weeks. I'm wow. yes. I'm, I just also just got my second DTM just a short time ago. So oh, I wow. Oh. Wow. I will put it on the progress chart. Congratulations. Well, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, so you won't see any more unique uh, speeches anymore. They'll all be part of the Pathways program. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, at least for, for full disclosure, um, I am actually here tonight on official business as the area director. I had let Larry know I would be uh, serving in my capacity as area director. As area directors have to uh, visit all the clubs in their area. I have four clubs um, once per six months. And so this is my official visit. So I'll be filing a report on the club as if I don't know all about the club anyway. Uh, but just... <laughs> For trans full transparency, I will be reporting on how awesome this club is. Oh, there you go. Experience at this particular meeting in my report. So just just so you guys know that. Thank you. We we discovered that the storytelling festival is in fact completely recorded, no live component whatsoever, and I was able to pause it so Tom and I were able to jump back in the meeting. So we'll we'll watch Excellent. it when the meeting's over. <laughs> okay. Y'all have a good two weeks. Guys, you later. Bye. Good night. You too. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Sorry. Goodbye. Have a good. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>